Hey, I just wanted to show this play uh, to support my my breakout hypothesis from the last um, the last video I uploaded. Uh, it's taken from the same game as all the other videos I've uploaded recently is taken from, and it actually uh, is a failed breakout by the team in black that results in a goal against. So I'm just going to play it here. Ooh, that's too loud. Let me just uh, turn that down. I don't want the echo in my uh, <laughs> my headset here. So let's let's just watch the play here. And I'm going to uh, give a little idea. So here we can see the breakout. It looks like it's going to start coming up this way. Uh, switches across the other side of the wall. It's kind of a mess at this point. Uh, guy fumbles the puck, and it's a turnover that's very shortly going to result in a goal against. So I'll just let it finish. There we go. There's the goal. And uh, this was all created because of the failed breakout attempt. Now let me show you what I saw here. Let me make sure my volume's on. All right, good. <laughs> the microphone volume is on. So here we go. Uh, they, it's a little bit of a dump and chase play here. Honestly, they probably could have gotten a good opportunity if they had just passed that up instead of dumped it, but that's beyond the point. Right here we have um, the puck going up the wall here, and we have you can, you can see everyone's kind of set up in their positions. Uh, stereotypical what all the coaches teach their kids. Um, guy here, guy here, guy here, no momentum at all going on. Uh, the defenseman is expected to kind of get the puck up to this guy. Uh, that's the first option, and uh, he's supposed to get it to him. Anyways, let's see what happens here. It looks like the puck's coming up this wall. This guy's pinned up against the wall. What he should have done is come down in this direction and curl to gain this place with momentum. He'd be attacking this defenseman with momentum. He'd be a much bigger threat. Actually, this defenseman is playing very passively, considering that the black team has no momentum coming out of the zone. I would expect him to move up into the play a little bit more. But uh, the only real threat, uh, it looks like, the gaining momentum is this player way over here on the other side, this guy right here. But he's covered by both of these players, and he's got this defenseman defending him, so he's not really any real threat. There's nothing that they can really do here. Anyways, let's go it up. This center uh, kind of glides into the zone. Right now is when he notices the play is going the other way. So um, he looks like he was in a good position. Play goes the other way down the boards. And at this point, um, he should be getting ready to fly up in support. But something weird happens here, and you'll see it in a second. He just kind of gets lazy and stands there and doesn't do anything. Right now, this player who had started this guy right over here who had started to uh, fly up the boards here in, uh, you know, standard fashion. Uh, I'm not sure why he was trying to do that, but uh, I guess that works. It's not a terrible thing to do. I would have had him, you know, gain these dots and move up that way, which might have been what he was planning to do, too. Who knows? But it will never be known because the puck comes around the other way, and now he's just going to get back on the boards. What I would rather see him do is start skating down low and then dip and come with the puck up the boards. This will create a bigger gap between him and the defenseman because you'll see uh, you'll see when he gets back on the boards like right there he's got a gap of maybe from there to there between the defenseman whereas as if he came and curled around with the puck and got it up there uh, he would have a gap like from there to there with the defenseman to work with. Anyways let's play it a little bit further. We'll see this centerman is just standing there when he should be starting to fly up this way in support. This forces this player to come over and do the centerman's job for him, uh, supporting the play. He should be gaining these dots, which he's done a good job doing, and then attacking. You'll see, notice this player, this defenseman, is tracking this guy perfectly. So if he had done that, he would have drawn this defenseman out of the play, and he would have set the false gap, whereas he could then curl around on the far blue line support like I showed in the last video. Instead, because the uh, the centerman doesn't do anything, he's just standing there. Uh, I have no idea what he's thinking, he's just daydreaming, smoking a cigarette or something. This guy is forced to come over here and do his job for him. We'll see, he actually does a, a pretty good job in support in this area. If uh, the pass gets to him, he's he's got some good speed. Uh, it's a one-on-two situation since the centerman hasn't joined the play, but he will at least, I believe, be able to gain the red line and dump it deep or do something, make a positive play. But um, you'll see, you'll see also, if this had been the centerman coming up in support, and he had uh, the centerman had gotten the pass instead, this defenseman would be out of the play 
because he would have been setting, he would have been way down by the far blue line since this guy set the false gap. So this defenseman would have been stationary since he was gapped to this player. This centerman would have been able to pick up the puck right about there in full speed and blown by this defenseman to create a two-on-one against this guy with this player who would have been setting the false gap up there. But uh, that is not how they played it. So the best they could hope for in this situation is... Uh, realistically speaking, is just for this guy to get the puck from him, gain the red line, and dump it in. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Um, oh, oh, I, I forgot to mention another point. This player, he's so high on the boards. If he had been going there and attacking with speed, look at how he, how he's gapped to this guy. Actually, he still has some space, even, even with that. But uh, what's going to happen eventually is after he fumbles with the puck, this player's going to catch up to him and, and take it away. If he had been going down with speed... He had gotten the puck and he fumbles it. Chances are, first of all, if he's in stride, that he manages to pick it up anyway and keep going. If not, then he's got the momentum anyways in going this direction where this player wouldn't be able to catch him. But um, if that makes any sense at all. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but uh, <laughs> whatever. So he's going to fumble the puck over here. It's going to result in a turnover. That's a nice seal contact by this player to knock him off the puck and allow his teammate to pick it up. Very good contact by him. And they're going to come down in the other direction and score a goal. You also notice that we have one, two, three, four, five black players all chasing. They're all chasing the play, looking at the puck. No one's covering this guy up here. No one's covering either of the point men, actually. So uh, that player down, down low in white makes a great play up to an uncovered point man who's able to just walk in, has all the time in the world to walk in and fire that for a goal. So, there we go. That would be, uh, hopefully, you know, a bit of evidence to support my theory uh, presented in the last video of how, how a breakout should be done and how uh, most youth teams, and even this is uh, this is a pretty high level, this is NCAA Division Three, and even at this level, um, players are still not not executing the breakout in an effective manner. And I think that, uh, in the end, comes all down to youth coaching that they weren't taught the correct way as kids and even if they were taught the correct way now it would be a tough habit to break so uh, let me know what you think let me know how wrong i am <laughs>